Hey everyone, it's Brenda. I'm here today to do just a little bit of a catch-up video with you guys, and um, I figured I'd try a voiceover. Here I'm showing you some pens I'm going to be working with. Um, if you need a better view, you can always pause the video and take a closer look. Um, I do actually show it pretty close though, and also the sketchbook that I'm starting with you. However, I did do my pencil sketch first, and you'll see that that's probably going to be um, or at least for the most part, it'll be how I start most of my videos with this already done and in place. So this way it just is quicker for you guys. You don't have to sit through a full length of the video unless, you know, if that's really what you choose. Um, I can, you know, leave a message below and I will try to do a completely real time video, um, where I start to finish from pencil sketch on, but those really are um, quite elaborate. I figured I would give this a go as I do love to do my sketching and doodling if you follow me for any length of time. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been on lately. A lot has been going on in my life. A lot of, um, oh, I've been making a lot of changes and I've been feeling a little bit better so my health has been increasing. Um, yeah, it, it's been pretty good. Um, Sorry I haven't kept in touch with you all. I like I said, it has been so so busy. I still am seeing the doctors, still trying to get everything under control, but um as for feeling wise, I am definitely happier. I still have my bad days, you know. But it could always be worse. Here I'm incorporating some um Zentangle patterns. If you're not um familiar with them, which I think most people are, you can research these uh, through Google or anywhere online to find different patterns if you can't come up with any just out of your head, but they really are simple. It's any kind of basic repetitive pattern that you just kind of go over and over. It's just, you can always add more detail, but they are meant to be simplistic at first. Um, there are books that can help you on that if you're not comfortable, you know, with just doing it on your own. I, I do know, you know, a lot of us get artist block where the creativity just doesn't come out. You want to do something happy, you want to do something artistic, but it's just not there within you. You just can't translate anything to the paper for yourself. So sometimes it's good to, you know, to look at different already drawn patterns to kind of give you inspiration and a basis to start with. I have been doing and drawing for Oh my gosh, since I was climbing, you know, like most people, everyone kind of just starts with their basic little stick to your drawings and, you know, whatnot. And the only training I've kind of had, I wasn't really training, is just your basic art classes in school where they're like, okay, you know, puppy cloud makes a tree and um, use your own creativity, come up with your own designs. They don't teach you way too much. Most of what I've learned, I've learned from books that I've bought at art supply stores, um, just drawing what I see in nature, or even man made creations like we're building some stuff just in the sketchbook, sit outside, maybe by the creek, or like when I was young I used to go to work with my father and I could only draw the building I used to work in the quarry. So well he didn't work in the quarry. He worked for a company that had a quarry. He was uh, uh purchasing agent and um, just one step below the plant manager. But anyway, um, I would sit there and I would draw the buildings, the machinery, the old tasks, the dump trucks. Um, and they were never always great, but the more tasks that I get, and I'm still not perfect with getting it looking completely realistic or anything like that, but it doesn't matter. My my interpretation of it is, you know, kind of what matters. That's what makes art. So, the more that you practice, the more that you get out there and you use that time to relax and just enjoy your art, you will see the improvement. But the minute I've noticed that you start putting pressure on yourself to create something, you really lose all your drive and all the, lack of better words, passion really to continue with your art and to get better. Um, I start just kind of doing scribbles, and sometimes the scribbles are out on my bed, and other times the scribbles. <laughs> um, you know, those things that you just, you really are embarrassed to put out there, but everybody has it, everybody does those, and it's a good thing 
because it helps you see that you've improved and it gives you that sense of accomplishment, you know. And you really do need that because without that, I mean, you need that little push to keep going. Otherwise, you know, like, well, if you're like me anyway, it's like, if I don't see any kind of improvement, I kind of get discouraged and then I kind of try to stay away from it. And I'm, I can, I'm usually a very uh, motivated person, but um, yeah, lately that's not been the case. Um, well, I should say in the last few years it wasn't the case. And I'm finally starting to find myself again and perfect that. So art is really helping in that aspect. Um, so is also, you know, just changing my lifestyle and everything. Uh, you know, I'll talk about more maybe in later videos. No one will make anything too heavy handed. I want to keep this light and I, after all, this is the beginning video to a new series I'd like to start. Um, hopefully it'll be well received. Um, I do think that this might be an easier way for me to keep up with my videos um, every now and then, just sharing some of my doodle sketches with you because they are relaxing for me, they are helping me, and hopefully this will help you guys as well to get some inspiration to do your own sketching, do your own doodles, and you know, enjoy your art too. And you can share this work together. Um, and this one, since it is the opening page in my book, I'm doing a little bit of some old world text, almost font style here. Um, and I completely just can't draw this. I didn't use any kind of calligraphy um, pens or you know tips or anything. This is just a plain um, the pilot precise pen. And actually, I drew this out with pencil first, and I all created just kind of sketched the letters, you know, instead of actually making them with the um, chisel tips and whatnot. Um, you can see how I'm outlining them. That's pretty much how I drew them. It's just easier for me to look at something <clears throat> and draw it sometimes than it is to pull it from memory. Um, if I'm not feeling very creative, I will. Google search an image and look at it, look through them, try to find something that inspires me and take bits and pieces of it and make it my own. And see if I can't recreate something close to it or maybe something completely different, taking you know, maybe two different objects and combining them together to see what I could come up with. Um, it's always great for inspiration because I've noticed that a, like, with a lot of different drawing challenges out there, like the 30 day challenges and stuff like that, I'm kind of discouraged. A lot of it's like, okay, draw your feeling, draw draw you if it was this. It's like, well, I, that's not really something that I was looking for. I'm looking for something more, I guess, inanimate um, to draw. And a lot of the things that are already out there are kind of more life involved, so things that are actually living, like, I can draw, kind of, I guess I should say, I can kind of draw a sketch, you know, people or manga characters, anime characters, whatnot, but it's not, I'm not great at it, and I'm not looking really to improve the realism in that aspect, I really do like nature, and kind of the man-made objects a little bit more, even though, granted, we are nature, but we're nature, but um, people just have a little bit more curvature and defining lines that it's a different type of detail. And it's not so much that it's more intricate than like the fine grains on a piece of wood or the bark on a tree. Or even, I mean, you could compare that to your skin with your pores. The only thing is, it's harder for me to translate what I see the paper when it's more like if I'm looking at my hand right here. It would be harder for me to translate all the detail on my hand because what you see are your exterior lines and you see some of the folds and the skin and everything. And sometimes you could see the veins and the muscles. 
but there's more detail than that. And sometimes I look too deeply and overanalyze it. And that's what makes the, the drawing not come out as I want it to. And I get really discouraged. And I think a lot of people have that problem and they just don't realize it. Because they're more focused on just trying to get that image out of their head as close as possible. When the best thing you do is just get the basic sketch of what's in your head. So you have that idea to hold on to. Just get that on paper. Even if like it's not working out completely, write your ideas the most you know, in the most descriptive way that you can, you know, somewhere on that page. So this way you can come back to it later and be like, okay, yeah, I remember what I was thinking and practice with a few things and you will get better. You know, I, with like with anything. Practice always helps with the improvement. And I have seen great improvement, you know, in my self portraits and stuff like that. And it's just not I guess the direction that I'm looking to go with my art. However, I do appreciate it and I do really enjoy looking at it. And every once in a while, I, I do go back to it. Just probably not as much as I really should to actually really advance my art. Um, as you can see here, I did some lace work around it and I did write Let's Begin since it's our first page. I did a little flowers, some scroll work. Um, and I really do, like I said, like the nature, and I really do like, well, it's just a pleasant form. Like there's, it's kind of symmetry, but not complete. Um, there's a little bit that's off center, and it's kind of like representative of me, I guess, going through the stages uh, in life that I'm going through now. Like, I'm pulling things together. Things are finally coming together for me, um, but there's some things that are still kind of out in the field, but it's okay, because those are the things that keep you going, and they're the things that keep you motivated, they keep you on track, and they keep things fun, because um, there's always something new to learn, there's always something new to pick up and get into, and I think that's probably what I really am drawn to the most with art. There's, there's always something else to get into. There's always another technique or a new item to look at to draw or a new idea or you can put a spin on the old idea. I mean, a lot of people complain about, oh, you copy my work, you copy this, you copy... Well, everything pretty much in life has already been done. Everything is a recreation of something else. So when you put your spin on something, that's what makes it different. That's where your individuality is starting to shine and come out. And that's what art, to me, it really is all about. I mean, you're putting your spin on ideas that have been around for ages. And you're just doing the best to evolve and do the best you can. Just like anything in life, like our technology and whatnot. I mean, these are all things that have been touched upon in the past, they're just slowly being upgraded and made more modern and to fit on the set. I'm sorry guys, I really didn't make that. I didn't mean to make this a heavy uh, conversation, but yeah, this, this is me. Um, I can't stick to one topic pretty much for too long, and everything always tries to get down to a deeper meaning behind it. Uh, the associations are just something that I guess I do with my analytical, logical mind, even though I'm um, creative with art. My mind is more of a, a logical side, except when it comes to mathematics. And I can do it, but it's not a joy. My joy is more with the opposite side of the brain, you know, the creative side. But I think it's uh, really important to be able to use both sides of your brain and to focus them. So that's why I think Zentangling really plays a really good part because a lot of people um, don't realize that you can keep your brain active with Zentangling because you're really not thinking. It's just the creative side taking control, almost like your subconscious helping you get your picture done and you can think of more important things going on. Here it is. This is it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope you come back and 
see you in the next video. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you all for sticking around. And if you'd rather me speed these up, please leave a comment below or message me, whichever. Let me know because I would greatly appreciate any feedback. Constructive criticism is always, always welcome. Um, here I'm going to color these in really quick. Well, probably not really quick, but um, I wanted some depth to this, and I'm sorry I planned on <laughs> I planned on ending editing it, <clears throat> ending it there, but apparently that was not. I forgot about coloring this section. In. I actually did one this early. Um, but yeah, if you to get back to it, if you really would rather see these sped up so it's not so drug out, just let me know, and I will see what I could do. I just got some editing software, so. It's basic, and my skills are quite basic with it, but I am definitely going to try to make some time to sit down and learn the software so this way, you know, it, it may actually become more beneficial to have a quicker video. But I do know some of you do like the full detailed, slow videos, and I just wanted to cut some time by just starting with the ready pencil sketch because sometimes I could sit there for I don't know, anywhere from a couple minutes to have a sketch on this size of a page to, what, maybe a couple hours. And that's just for the pencil sketch. Because you sit there, and I know a lot of you struggle with that as well. You're not quite sure what exactly, you know, you want to do. It's like you look at a picture like here. Like, I sat there for a little bit determining, do I really want to color that in? Because once you make that commitment, you're kind of stuck with it. This paper is not completely white, but it's not a cream base either, a cream color either. But there's no way I could have used white out. Even on plain white paper, when you use white out, there's always that <laughs> residual trace. You always see it. So once you put that mark on the paper, you're kind of committed and you've got to go with it. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. This time, I think it actually worked out. And I did start using a um, Bic, where is the Bic um, Sharpie? And I, as soon as I started doing it, it's like, oh yeah, that does look nice and it would help me get through this and color it a lot quicker. Here's the situation with that though. I wasn't thinking that it could bleed through. And I really didn't want it to bleed through to the other side. However, in my sketchbook, I don't want to draw on both sides of the paper. I only draw on one, only because sometimes when you hold the drawing up, you could still see the other one behind it with the, with the basic sketchbooks. And if I wanted to use the marker like I did on here, I wouldn't be able to because it would be through. And there would be nothing I can do to save the next page. And I really didn't want to kind of not only lose the back of this page, which is fine because I intend, I plan for that, that's why I don't use the back, but I didn't want to lose the next page in the sketchbook because I already, in, when I started this one, I already had started an idea down and it's, a, it's only a little bit of an idea, but I didn't want to lose that. So it was just much easier for me just to stop with that pen and just go over with the fine tip and just take my time and fill it in. And now here you can see I am stippling, which is just tying a bunch of tiny little dots around just to give a little bit more detail and a little bit more depth and color, believe it or not. I mean, that is the color, but to the picture. And if there's anything that you guys can think of that you'd like me to talk about maybe during these, definitely leave me some comments below. I could definitely use some um, ideas for what to talk about. I mean, I could talk about things that are going on in my life and these days, but sometimes that kind of gets old. Maybe there's certain things that, like, there's certain topics that you'd like me to talk about, like, my views on, or, like, just please no religion, no, no, um, no politics. I noticed I, that just really stirs up the crowd, and I don't want to um, get into that. So, lighthearted topics would be greatly appreciated. Um, even though life, I suppose, isn't completely lighthearted, but that's okay. Um, 
I figured here I would show you guys just a little bit more of the coloring before I jump off of here for the end. And um, I'm going to sign it here. But thank you all for sticking around with me. Definitely, please come back. Thumbs up if you like it. And subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.